Scott Borthwick hit his best innings of the LV County Championship season to date as Durham battled hard to stay in contention between the showers on the third day of the game at the Brighton and Hove Jobs.com County Ground. We had a prompt start with Sussex declaring on that overnight score of 505 for 9. James Anion then had Mark Stoneman caught behind with his very first ball at the start of the second over of Durham's reply. Borthwick, who'd made only 91 championship runs from six innings thus far, looked in good touch from the off. His side needed him as their initial target was to make 356 runs to avoid following on for the second match in succession. That looked a long, long way off when a lack of communication between Borthwick and Keaton Jennings saw the latter run out by Luke Wright's throw for 13, with a total on 34 for 2. It seemed to be Borthwick's fault. That run out, of course, was not what Durham wanted on a pitch where only two men thus far had made significant contributions. Borthwick now had to work hard for his runs, some of which came off the edges of his bat, off Anion, who was, at times, unlucky. The importance of getting Borthwick's wicket was etched on the Sussex fielders' faces. When Borthwick did use the middle, he connected very well. This wonderful pull shot carried the distance as Durham began to make good progress. The partnership between Borthwick and Kumar Sangakara being dominated at this stage by the Englishman. A guide through point of Anion took Borthwick to his first 50 of the summer. That was his seventh four to go with his 1-6 in an innings which had thus far occupied 79 deliveries. At this point, the number three had 53 runs out of the 80 on the board. Importantly, Borthwick was allowing Sangakara to find his feet. The Sri Lankan was supposed to be using his short time with Durham to prepare himself in English conditions ahead of the forthcoming test series. The wonderfully talented batsman doesn't have a particularly good record in this country and after two failures on his debut against Yorkshire, he needed to have time at the crease for personal reasons as well as for the cause of his team. It was not easy for him at times, even with all of his experience in this game. Steve McGoffin made life uncomfortable for him. With that edge dropping short of the slips, Michael Yardy moved in closer at second slip, perhaps a little too close, as this edge flew at pace to him before being dropped. Sangakara had made 20 at the time. Borthwick, of course, is much more used to playing in these conditions, yet more rain had meant that it was not easy to keep up the concentration levels, with showers meaning that the batsmen never knew how long they would have to be out in the middle for. Borthwick dealt with all that was thrown at him pretty well. But he too found the bounce of McGoffin difficult to handle at times. This edge fell just short of the fielder at point, and soon afterwards the players were off again. And that was that for the day, another one that was ruined for the most part by the weather on the south coast. Only 17 and a half overs were possible on day two and 45.2 on the penultimate one. A draw now seems a certainty unless Sussex can manage to get 18 wickets on the last day, which will begin with Durham on 137 for two, with Borthwick on 84 and Sangakara on 30. They still trail by 368 runs.